Now, the rest of the story. Zerna Sharp, born August 12, 1889, Hillsburg, Indiana. As the eldest of five children, she was rather prepared for the role of teacher. It seemed there was always some little body in need of knowledge or counsel or comfort. What do you know? Zerna became a grammar school teacher, age 17. Then a school principal in LaPorte, Indiana. Even more lay ahead of what would have been her lifetime in the field of education. Now, for years, Zerna wrote to Chicago publisher Scott Forsman and Company, encouraging them to publish a better elementary school primer. Eventually, the Forsman people wearied of Zerna's barely disguised criticism and offered her a job as a textbook editor. And she accepted. It meant leaving a comfortable position, uprooting, moving to Chicago. But this was Zerna's big opportunity to make an impact on American education. So let's move forward now to 1930. Zerna Sharp is 41, by now established in the publishing business. Should have felt fulfilled, but she was frustrated. Many afternoons you might have seen her on Lake Michigan Beach, gazing out over the water, wondering, writing primers, communicating with young children in printed words, was not as easy as she had once imagined. As a teacher in the first grade classroom, Zerna had been able to communicate with her pupils. But books for children that young were more like barriers, silent, sometimes confusing, potentially discouraging barriers. Then one day, Zerna Sharp just looked up. All around her on the beach were children playing, children calling out, talking, communicating with one another. For the first time in her career as an educator, Zerna really listened to them. Not as a teacher, not as a textbook editor, but as one of them. And suddenly the world of children unveiled itself before her eyes. Sentences, short, often words, implicit. Words, often repeated. Not just look, but look, look, and throw the ball, and see the girl run. Phrases packed with meaning, stripped of the superfluous. Children may hem and haw when speaking to adults, Zerna observed, but while communicating with each other, they seem more direct. And so was born on the shores of Lake Michigan, an institution. You see, Zerna Sharp listened carefully to those children. She wrote down what she heard, and the notes she garnered formed the basis for the first book of its kind, a book containing only 17 words, which spoke to youngsters as no book had ever spoken before. In that slender volume, as in its sequels, only one new word would be introduced on each page, and no more than five new words in each story. Of course, the characters which would befriend beginning readers for generations, a cat called Puff, and a dog called Spot, and a boy and girl who once played on the Lake Michigan Sands, a boy and girl named Dick and Jane. Zerna Sharp wrote those books. Oh, no. Oh, no. They, the boys and girls on the beach, wrote those books. Dick and Jane. Sound familiar? I hoped it would. For now you know the rest of the story.